get water, um, and then we will. We are in the process now of, of draining that sugary water off into the kettle, and uh, we're going to boil that, add some hops. Then it's going to come out through the heat exchanger into the fermenter, and um, it will be. And the fermenters are over here. The fermenters here, yeah. And it will be. Uh, it will, it will be happy with, with the yeast, and then we'll add our... Now, how big are these fermenters? These are 30 barrel fermenters. Well, they're more than 30 barrels. They, I put 35 barrels in. You're supposed to be able to net out 30 barrels. If you put 35 barrels in, we'll get... Um, well, if you're like this, we're going to probably only get about... Um, if we're lucky, we'll get well, 28, 29. Probably that's about what we'll get. Is, that, we'll the usual, is that the usual length for the brew? Um, for a beer that's got this much, uh, in the way of dry hops, you lose a lot. You can expect to lose like, like six, six or seven barrels. So, um, we don't have a, we don't have a, um, centrifuge or any fancy, fancy right. toys like that. So, so just, why do you, why do you, how do you lose that much water? Uh, we lose that much I mean, beer, beer. Because, uh, there's, there's going to be, uh, a lot of hops in the dry hop and they, they just like, it turns into muck at the bottom of the cone. So um, yields are never good on New England IPA, but you know that's the price we pay. Right. Fortunately, I'm not. Ma I make them once, once every, once a month or every, or so. Not uh, not once a day like a lot of our, a lot of our colleagues do. So my losses aren't nearly as bad. And so then they're here in the fermenters, and from here, um, we'll go to cans and kegs. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So how many how many barrels uh, are in it's the 30, system? Thirty barrel system. Thirty. Yeah. So okay. um, we're we're gonna take thirty seven barrels uh, into the kettle right now, and then at the end of the boil, we're uh, well, we go in a little bit heavy, so that at the end of the boil we can water it back to so get like thirty seven barrels in there, sometimes even more, because uh, we're gonna lose some from the hops and the proteins that are gonna be at the at the bottom of the kettle um, when it's all said and done, and then. Um, we will, uh, then we're gonna, um, yeah, so then we'll get, we'll get our 35 into the, into the fermenter. Mm -hmm. And how many days a week do you brew? Um, usually two. Two? Yeah. Uh-huh. And how many beers do you have available? Oh my, I don't know. I counted um, 39. That sounds... And four of them are bottle conditioned. That sounds, uh, sure, I'll take <laughs> one for it. Okay, how do you manage to do that many beers? I mean, we have a lot of barrels. Um, we do some blending, um, and uh, you know, we make a lot of lager. That's not. Um, that's not. You know, that we make a lot of lager. So you know, that's a longer turnaround, and uh, you know, it's. Um, we're still not a big enough brewery where we're, where as soon as it's made, it's sold. So right. it lasts for a few weeks. So you get some, it just builds up, there's some overlap. Then we have, we also, I also don't believe that every batch of beer needs to sell out the minute it's made. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, that'd be nice, but um, there's, we sort of layer things. We have some that have a longer lifespan. We have some that, that uh, take a shorter amount of time. Um, sorry, I got That's all right, now you're checking the uh, electronic. Uh yeah, I'm just making sure that, well, that my flow rate from the from the mash to the kettles is where I want it to be. And um, it, it now is. So now this brew kettle right here is starting to fill up. Yeah, yeah it's uh, almost full. It's almost full. Wow. That's a lot of beer. Yeah. And while it's, uh, you said you didn't have a centrifuge, but you fill this. Yeah. And then it boils with the hops. It boils, and then we oh, add the and, hops. Because okay. it's a New England idea. Uh -huh. It doesn't work like, doesn't work like real beer does. <laughs> and did you do any dry, how, what type of hopping do you do? So what we're gonna do with this, is we're gonna boil it for an hour, and then afterward, we're gonna we're gonna bring the temperature down to 170 degrees, uh -huh. and then we're gonna add hops to that. Um, and it will be during the whirlpool, and that'll be the only hops it gets in the kettle. And then 
and then from there we'll push the um, we'll push it out to the to the fermenter. We'll ferment, and then after after primary fermentation, just at the end of primary fermentation, we'll add a very low shy hop, and that's how we get the, the flavor off of this. Now, in using the dry hops, uh, or using the hops at the end, you've got a lot of volatile oils that haven't been given off. Right. So they go to the aromas. Yeah, exactly. So you do pick up some bitterness, um, counter, counter to the, you know, to the belief that you have to boil for 60 minutes to get bitterness. Like, even in, even in 170 degree, um, you know, uh, you still get, you still get some bitterness. But like New England IPA is not known as a as a bitter beer. It's uh you know, it's just a it's supposed to be soft and juicy. Right. Um, you know, we make this we make one at a time. We have a, a New England pale ale, which I actually prefer to drink. Um, but uh you know it's not it's not the primary focus by any stretch of what we do, but it's you know we have to keep a rounded uh, portfolio in our tap room and um, you know it's a fun process beer to make so we you know I don't, I don't mind making it. If I didn't like making it, we wouldn't make it. But, uh, you know, it's a. Uh, I don't know why I feel like I'm sounding like I'm apologizing for making an IPA because we're a lager and saison brewery. You know, it's an important beer. But you got to keep you got to keep your hand in different types of yeast, I exactly. imagine. Yeah, yeah, and we use the same yeast for this as we use for our West Coast IPA and for all of our English ales. So, uh -huh. um, you know, it's a good. We basically just keep two. Well, we keep three yeasts. We have we have our mixed culture for our saison, and uh, we have um, our lager yeast and our ale yeast. So. Um, all right then. So. Place together well. It moves down through this vessel into the cooling agent here. Uh, yeah, it, run, it run, just runs through here on its way to the uh, on its way to the to the fermenter. Uh huh. All right, and then once again we visit our. Mighty fermenters. Yes, the mighty fermenters. And again, how many did you say you have? Fermenters, we have five. Five. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Five uh, stainless steel fermenters. Mm -hmm. We have two bright tanks, we have the third one coming soon. Excellent. All right, well, that is the tour of the brew house, folks. I'm Pete LaFrance, the old growler, and here we are at the Wild East brewing company in Gowanus, Brooklyn. And today we have the brewer here. Yeah, I'm Brett. Uh, I'm the yeah, uh, co-founder head, head of brewing here at um, Wild East Brewing Company. And uh, yeah, um, great who, to chat. Who first came up with the idea of Wild East? Um, it started, well, all three of us uh, co-founders are home brewers, but it, was started, it started with me because it was um, making beer for a living was something that I, I was interested in doing. I had previously had a career in journalism, and during that time, I, um, I brewed about 250 homebrew batches, uh, entered in a lot of competitions, uh, and then um, worked my way through brewing school while while still working at the Wall Street Journal, as well as um, starting uh, doing some internships and starting some part-time work at breweries while st still having that career. Uh, and then when the time was right, I, um, I, jumped, I jumped ship, took a buyout, and, uh, and never looked back. Um, so I had been planning something um, for a while. I knew one, I wanted to, to have my own company. And um, I, you know, Tyler came, came on first. He and I had been friends from the homebrew circuit. And uh, he, um, you know, put his, his mark on the business plan. And then, um, and then we found Lindsay, who kind of had uh, everything that the two of us didn't have. In terms of a business background, um, you know, having like a little bit more financial acumen, um, she was also uh, has a background working in the lab, the yeast lab. So she she uh, had had a lot of those skills. So uh, we actually have a very good uh, complementary group uh, in the ownership team. So. What was the most difficult thing about starting up the brewery? Um, depends on when you ask me. It was really hard coming up with a name, and then that was easy. How and did then, you do that? How do we do it? Yeah. It started before it, I even had partners. It was, we just, um, Tyler ultimately came up with the name, but we weren't even working, you know, he hadn't, we haven't even, hadn't even teamed up yet. So um, basically we, uh, my wife had a, had a, a brunch and everybody came, a bunch of friends came over and, and we had, um, we were drinking my homebrew and 
we all made lists and passed the lists and people would circle the ones they liked and and uh, and you know pass the lists around and nothing really came of it until one day uh, my wife looked at um, some of the sheets that were there and she's like what about Wild East this is great and it was Tyler's sheet and so we went back to Tyler and we're like by that time Tyler and I were, were had had teamed up and had uh, already run some some names through uh, our attorneys and got and gotten uh, gotten talked out of several several situations and um and and I was like hey how about this one that you suggested like last year and he was like oh yeah I forgot about that and now it was it so. do, do you know how I, I thought maybe it had something to do with wild yeast absolutely yes, taking me that off totally. my wife thought that it was well uh, because of the beers here wild east because the east wild west wild east all of the above, but definitely that play on, on wild yeast, which, you know, you've got all these barrels behind me that are full of Britannomyces and, and, um, and uh, you know, lactic acid bacteria. Um, back there behind this front stack, there's some uh, sp spontaneously fermented beer. So, um, you know, we, yeah, it's definitely, that's, that's the, the heart of the name. Uh, how ironic do you find it that uh, you're working with beers with Britannomyces and your name is Brett? I have always been happy that I did not, uh, my parents did not name me Wilbur Earl the Fourth, which could have happened. Um, yeah, I, it's a, I, I've always found that to be a, a fun and happy coincidence. What are you trying to do here at the brewery? Make the best beer in the known universe. If you're not trying to do that, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Well, there's the profit part too. Oh yes, of course, business. of course. I am trying to sell. I'm trying to, and then of course, sell that beer. Right. Um, but it certainly makes it better if you um, if you are uh, making really good beer. It's much easier to sell it. Why did you Why did you decide just to set up shop here? Um, well, so for one thing, I've lived in this neighborhood now for for 20 years, and um, I you know I know it I know it very well, and and I also saw the we also saw the gro the growth opportunity um, in Gowanus being um, it's the the last part of this part of Brooklyn that, that had had yet to like sort of um, had its like had its, its growth. Um, at the same time, it is one of the last parts of Brooklyn that that is an industrial area. So um, we saw an industrial area that was that was nestled comfortably. Uh, in in amongst a bunch of uh, wealthier neighborhoods, so we thought we had a building clientele um, who had who would have the money to uh, um, you know spend money on high end beer, and um, we just had to make sure it was dog and child friendly. So, and where do you think you're going from here? Oh my, um, we are going to. Uh, Continue to grow, continue to grow the logger program. Try, you know, we want to we want to be seen as um, one of the top logger makers in the United States. Uh, at the same time, grow our our um, farmhouse program. Those are the, those two are the are the heart of what we do. So um, we, we want to make sure that that um, you know we want we want mixed fermentation saison to be to be popular, and we want to be helping to um, to lead the charge on that. Also, we want people to uh, to re uh, to fall back in love with English style ales. Um, we're, we're pushing hard on that. We're trying to bring uh, we're trying to bring cask beer back in New York City. Um, we've acquired a bunch of casks, um, and we know that we know that there are cask engines out there, and we're having those conversations um, to try to get that to be to uh, to be a lot more common. It's because it used to be. I noticed the range of. Uh ABVs on your beer go from, I believe it's uh, two point something to uh, ten point five. Yeah, uh, it's uh, the, the low end. The low end is um, is uh, three point three point five, I think, right now. Okay. Three point four, maybe. Um, yeah, we don't. Um, and and if you were to do it as a scatter tr scatter plot, um, most of them would be on the low end. We have three. Uh, we have three, um, in that sort of like nine and above range. Mm -hmm. um, we have one seven percent beer, and then everything else is is much Sixes, lower. Sixes, fives, yeah. fours. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about about the bottle conditioning. Um, yeah, the bottle conditioning is um, we usually do them in uh, take a portion of the beer, and, and um, we we add a champagne yeast and sugar, and calculate the amount. We usually try to shoot for three volumes, um, and how, how do you decide which beer to to bottle? All um, mixed fermentation beers are bottle or can conditioned. 
um, because I find that you get too many off flavors if you try to um, uh, yeah, if you try to if you try to force carve them. Mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of the the Berliner Weiss, for whatever reason, it behaves. Huh. Let's see. Okay. Why did you start home brewing? Um. I was looking for a hobby that, um, you know, I kind of got caught up in the sort of like creative culture that was happening in Brooklyn in the aughts. And, um, you know, it was a, you know, um, I was enjoying cooking, but I also was enjoying going to restaurants and having like the good beer that was, that was starting to trickle in. And the connection between cooking and brewing? Um, they're like distant cousins. <laughs> um, you know, you're still developing flavor, so uh, you know, and, and a lot of the a lot of a lot of the flavor development is done in the same way. I mean, Maillard reactions are very important in multi beer, um, and you know, you still attention to detail is still um, is still you know paramount. Um, I would say that sanitation in home cooking is not necessarily as important as sanitation in home brewing because you're going to eat that meal so. You're gonna eat that meal in a day or two, uh, and that's it. Whereas, like, if, if your sanitation's off and your home brew, you know, you're gonna notice it a few weeks from now. Or you call it Belgian beer. Or you call it Belgian beer. <laughs> well, don't do that. <laughs> it's old-fashioned. <laughs> I was just uh, noticing as you were talking about that the, the almost a dance between science and art. Oh yeah. When it comes to both food and beer. Absolutely. There's a real dance there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got a lab right there. Um, uh, and you know, we you build a beer uh, based on how it's, how the flavor is going to turn out, but there's a lot of science that goes into um, that goes into uh, you know making sure it turns out that way. If you were going to choose a beer, <clears throat> one of your beers from here, to drink with a grilled hot dog with uh, Dijon mustard and sauerkraut. I would take um, Patients in Fortitude or Fun House, the Pilsners, or Little Patients, one, one, of, my, one of my three uh, uh, main Pilsners I think I would take. I was just about to suggest that myself. Super. Well, I want to thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. <laughs>